Okay, so here we go into Japan 8. Uh, UK 8. He had six infantry, two fighters. Guess where those all went? <laughs> the fighter cycle continues. Uh, let's see. He uh, attacked Trans Jordan, so he did kill my German guy there. Throwing his UK tank out there. He attacked France, and uh, he used fighters to wipe Arch up here. Uh, let's see. Arch, he killed my artillery, but he did lose a fighter. That's good. Yay! Lost fighter. Uh, Transjordan didn't lose anything. France, he lost one, but he still has one there. But the best news is, like I said, this little move here made him bring his transports down here. So that's buying me a turn to be able to still push units this way. I'll still be able to push six infantry this direction at least. Plus, I don't have as many putting pressure on France. So when it's their turn, we can push tanks back up. We can push tanks back down. We can push tanks on around and then be ready to move their tanks back on around again. We can cycle our tanks around too. So the the move is going to give me a little bit of maneuverability with the, the Germans, which is the main thing I was wanting. Uh, it cost me one German infantry. My others are a little bit out of place. But like I said, I, I'm sitting here calculating out. I, I don't got G12. I don't got G13. You know, this isn't a... Okay, we push everything in and we're going to get this because if we push everything in, we're just going to continue the same fighters coming in. He's building six units. Uh, we got to we got to make progress up here uh, as well. So the good news is, you know, all of that is with him counting these fighters going in, which is very much slowing him down here. Uh, if we look at just the progress here in the um, the Pacific, so I've got. Six, seven, eight, nine, twenty-six in the water right now. I got twenty-six boats and planes in the water. I could put two on the, my planes actually. So I got twenty-eight. So I got a twenty-eight count going here right now that can be in the water. Again, I'm not counting fighters that can be uh, off ground. And yes, they they have their reach. Like uh, my intention to go to sixty here. All nine of these fighters can land here with this fighter and these four fighters. So I mean, there's definitely use for fighters not on the ground that can fight in the in the water. But in general. Whenever someone wants to move a stack, whether it's him moving a stack of fleet or me moving a stack of fleet, you got to hold the water. So that's what I want to see. I want to see how we're doing matching up on just our general fleet stacks. So again, so I've got my 928, you know, plus a bonus battleship. So 28 plus that bonus battleship. This destroyer is going to get killed. So he's got one, two, three, four five six to match him 10 13 15 16 23 24 so i'm four plus a battleship over him still right now so i've got more room now he's got more fighters on the board so he's got more capability of building carriers and landing fighters on them but uh right now i'm I, I've got the the water advantage at the moment, so I'm going to continue to utilize that. We come back to the war report, which you guys know I'm not too big on. I had 40 IPC, US has 40 IPC, so you know KJF US is really counting on being able to outproduce Japan, and you know I'm I'm matching them toe to toe. Now I'm going to spend nine of mine on infantry this turn, though. But I'm still going to match four boats to his four builds that he did this time. Now, this actually is kind of a four plus one because the fighter can land on it. But um, this round, I'm going to get me some more infantry to keep the push into Africa. And it just may be that Japan leads the push. I, I, I like how I was getting income towards my Axis side as this really is kind of being a, a, a double war, right? This isn't so much of Japan just crumbling. So, in any case, so we're going to build three destroyers, one sub, and three infantry. So I matched his four build, plus got three infantry on the board. We're going to drop them down here. Now, good news is we should be able to take this from U.S. The bad news is U.S. is going to probably use their air to wipe all four of these guys, whether I have them together or separate. I'm going to separate them so that it's a little bit more tricky i think ish maybe i don't know um <coughs> but uh yeah so we're, we're gonna take him but then we're gonna 
Yeah, maybe we'll pull two units back with these guys coming out, up and then move them in. I don't know. I'll, I'll think about that non-combat in a bit. But we'll take it. But he's going to wipe it, and the Russians are going to come back in, and he's going to get his 18 again. Then next turn, even if I had to sacrifice a transport, which I probably will, it'll be worth take, killing that last ground, and then it's just air up there. And although the air can be <laughs> challenging, at least we can pick away some of these... these Russian territories out to start decreasing the uh, Russia's income a little bit. So, all right, so here we go, combat move. I'm going to save my artilleries, even though it's kind of awkward. Um, I do get infantry down here for them to match to. Actually, you know what? I'll non-combat them back onto the island. Why not, right? That way they're, they're safe from being hit, but the transport... Can still hit him because i don't think leaving him here is gonna be any good because i mean he can use four planes here four planes are five and five and wipe them pretty efficiently plus he's got you know planes here he could one two three four in as well so he can send those four as well so yeah i, I think i'll actually pull them back onto the island put them safely under the island or just going to make sure we kill that transport we're not going to worry about chasing down the sub right now with destroyers i do want to make sure i leave one destroyer free to come to a block up here so we're going to move two of these so i don't forget the one to leave the one there So the good news is by coming up into 60, I'm going to be dead zoning 64. This is this is what I want to do. So I want to dead zone 64. And even if he moved everything back and brought as many fighters as he can, it'll be dead zone. So the only way he gets back up to 64 is by start throwing a couple destroyers out here for destroyer blocks. And I'm ready to start trading my subs for his destroyer. So I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, heck, if he does that, I might even just push into one of these, like 63, and I may have enough defense just to well, probably not with the new air he builds, but we'll see. Um, we may have enough defense to be able to kind of push into 58, maybe. One, two, three. We'll see. Um, and just kind of keep pushing him back. We may need another turn before we can of, of builds to take that over, but I don't think he's got much maneuverability. He certainly has to use destroyers to block block me at this point whereas i can still continue to stack without the destroyer blocks so he may slip down south because he could do that um since i'm not coming here he could slip on down here and make me have to use a destroyer block next time in 49 while coming down to save um borneo why i can come down into 50 or actually just 48 i guess i would just go to 48 but I need to block in 49. So he may come south, make me do that. Um, he may go north and use destroyer blocks. All that said, we're going to push forward with Japan here. Got him, got him, got... Oh, hey, hello. Let's send our dudes in here. I want to save one. I'm going to bring one of my bombers down here to India to help support the attack down here. I think we got him. And that's why I sent the two guys. Instead of just the one. Because I really needed to take that to make him have to take it and put his last ground guy in there. I hope we can win this without any losses.
Yeah, waste a hit on there. So that's always nice to be able to kill the destroyer for free. I mean, I'm going to put a destroyer block out there, but at least he's going to have to use a sub, and then I'll be able to take the sub, and so we'll trade back and forth a little bit there, but... those guys this way we're gonna push this guy this way we we'll move these guys up that way like I said I think we're just gonna grab these guys and we're gonna take my my kids and go back home hmm I was gonna put them in India but I wonder if there's any advantage to pushing off not really All right And we're not going to have to put any pressure on him. I think we keep it in India. Checked while I'm running as a def defensive profile, that could be trouble. Um, let's switch to this for this turn. So, we've got this chain, seeing me build three infantry in here, he's got to see that this chain is going to continue right now. So, he's going to have to do something, you know, he's going to have to continue to reinforce over here, so, um, or eventually we will bowl over. So, hopefully that'll start drawing some stuff, and this chunk of guys can help hold the center, and these guys can move up, and I'll probably end up sacrificing a transport next turn to kill this guy wherever he puts him. Um, just because it's going to be worth it to get that done. Alright, there we go. 